All right. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat>
He was just, you know, within the last year allowed to drink alcohol legally in the U.S. Like, it's not a big deal that they sent him down in the sense of, like, well, it's too bad he's not a future part of the team. He can go tear it up in Hershey and then try again later in the season or next year. This team right now is in win-now mode, and if McMichael's not ready at this point, that's fine. It's not a big deal. Let's let him play in the minors, tear it up, hopefully, come back next year. Now, if he doesn't tear it up in the minors, that's when we have a problem. What was your first legal drink? Do you remember? Mine was, I was in, I turned uh, 21 in Las Vegas at Margaritaville, and the drink I had was called a License to Chill. Do you remember your first drink? Uh, I remember I was at um, <laughs> TGI Fridays. Um, oh, got a mudslide. I'm not a big – no, no, that would have been nice because I do like those. But um, I don't remember. Honestly, I was there with some friends and my brother, and I think he bought me my first drink. I don't know what it was. I honestly cannot remember. Was I, that, was that good of a night? You don't remember it was that good of a night. I had to go to work the next day. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, I was working at a summer camp and I have a summer birthday and I had to go to work the next day. Like, but th- it wasn't a big deal for me. I was like, because what statute of limitations are probably passed now. You know, I'd had plenty of drinks prior to being 21. Not like, you know, excessive, but, you know, it, I, I just don't remember. I don't know. I think I did have a mudslide that night, but I don't... mudslides, the Friday mudslides are great. And I hate coffee, but I love those mudslides at uh, at Fridays. But I'm going to be completely honest with you. I did not drink until that first drink on my 21st birthday. Really? Good for you. Yeah, I never I never drank before then. I, I don't know. It just it wasn't a thing I, I was had into. I like a ton. No, no, no. Like, I, I never, like, in college or whenever I saw you, you know, it's not like you ever showed up hungover or something at class. But, like... I don't think I ever had a drink when we were, in, like, at college. No, yeah. But, like, I never... It just never was something I was into growing up. I was like, eh, whatever. When I turned 21, I'm like, all right, let's see what everyone's talking about and um, why we're all doing it, which was fine. But, like, 18, 19, even younger than that, you know, I know a couple of people in, in high school or whatever, people started drinking at, like, 14. Never, I never, it never did anything for me. I never was into it. So, like, yeah, I waited till I was 21. It just felt like the right thing to do. But, anyway, getting off of a, off of a, tangent there about drinking we do what we normally do we go on random tangents yeah it does look like we are recording this on wednesday morning um thanksgiving eve and practice is going on as we're talking so if you're getting going to be listening to this a little bit later all signs point to tj oshi coming back into the lineup tonight against the flyers like you said is it going to be an immediate impact i i have to assume he's not going to get tj oshi tight minutes with his first game back but this is a big deal for him to come back onto the ice again finally uh hopefully he can stay healthy this time around but this team has been struggling having Oshi out there uh it does help the team out it really does because he is he is like a heartbeat of this team he's a leader in the locker room he is a leader on the ice he's a big weirdo during warm-ups that he kind of gets everybody going this is, a, this is a good thing for this team to have T.J. Oshie back in the lineup. It might take a little time to make it seem like he's T.J. Oshie again, but still, this is a very good thing to have back in the lineup. Well, 100%. Having, I, I was being a little dismissive of it before, but having him back in the lineup is definitely a good thing. If anything, being in the locker room and having him in there, you know, he's, you can, he's big, like you said, he's got a bit of a weirdo um, warm-up on the ice i'm sure he's missing his his buddy he normally does that with but i think having him back is definitely a positive thing i just don't see the team necessarily doing dramatic i hope i'm wrong i just don't see the team doing dramatically better with him like having consistency throughout the lineup by getting guys back that were injured is a great thing because this team has been so inconsistent with their lineup lately so i think having the consistency having players that are playing together for you know a couple of games or even longer that have an opportunity to know where each other is going to be on the ice. I know they're all playing the same system more or less, and they, they should know where everybody is, but having that consistency with someone you're out there with, having that familiarity is is only a benefit. So having Oshi back, I think, is going to be a great thing both in the locker room. It'll be nice having him on the ice. I just question as to whether... I question their sort of... Um, plan right now which is sit back and wait for the injured guys to come back because as much as we like tj oshi 
over his career, he's given a lot of hits. He's taken a lot of hits. His body is beat up. He's put a lot. Uh, he's put his body on the line a lot in his career, and it's starting to catch up with him. And so, you know, how long is he going to be in this time before something else happens? And I'm not trying to be negative. It's just the reality of the last couple of years. It's the reality of sports. As you get older, you have more injuries or injuries take longer. Unless you're, you know, knock on wood, Ovechkin. Or apparently Phil Kessel. Yeah, why, why have you got to bring up Ovi's name in this? Come on. Well, I, that's why I went with Kessel, too. So it's like kind of, you know, it's not just Ovi. And I knocked on wood, don't worry. Um, but, you know, the reality is it's likely, as unfortunate it is, is that Oshie will have another injury before the end of the season. And so... The team now needs to start planning for these situations to come up because it's going to happen. I, I hope it doesn't. And you know what? He could be healthy the rest of the way. But the recent history has showed us that that's not the case. I mean, let's hope Oshie's all right. He, yes, God, he just he misses so much time. I, we talked about it last week of like how much time does he really have left in his playing career. I hope a lot. I really do. Um, I hope we see him for a good chunk of time, but it's 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 difficult because uh, every time he takes a hit, you're kind of like sitting back going, oh, is he going to be out now? Oh, what's going to happen now? So, I mean, hopefully, hopefully he comes in and he makes this team a little bit better. I mean, it's let's look at the schedule real quick. We know at the beginning of December they have the Western Canadian road trip, so they're going to be on the road a good chunk of time. But coming up now, they've got – Philadelphia tonight on on Thanksgiving Eve they've got Calgary then they have the for some odd reason the New Jersey Devils who are on fire and then they head out to Western Canada uh, within that week to Vancouver so two games at home are on the Thanksgiving holiday hopefully there's not too much trip to fan on the 25th on Friday hopefully they're not too much turkey but a trip up to New Jersey Definitely not as easy as it may have been in the last couple of years, and good chance you're facing former Capital goaltender Vitek Vanacek, who's tearing it up. I, honestly, who pissed off the New Jersey Devils? <laughs> like, apologize so they'll calm down. They, what a 13 game winning streak! That's insane. Yeah. So, you know, congrats to them. Good for Vanacek. Uh, bad for the Caps right now because. The Caps hanging around. They're trying, you know, oh, we just wait out these injuries and then we'll be able to make the playoffs. That's not the case. The problem with that logic that I have is that, yes, if you can hang around, then you still have that opportunity. But then you also have to hope that the other teams start to lose. Like, what if they just decide to not suck? Then what are you going to do? You can't dig yourself out of a hole you've made. So this plan is dumb. Like, this team has a problem and they're just hoping. For That's what it is. They're hoping for the best. There's, there's no actual, like, statistical value to show that this is going to happen. They're just, fingers crossed, hoping they're going to get back into it. They're not going to have more injuries. Because we've seen if they have injuries, they suck. That they can't, you look at Colorado, they're down, who are they down? Landis Cog and Echuskin, and they're still tearing it up, more or less. Yes, they also probably have better role players and guys that are coming in right now. But that doesn't mean that the Capitals should suck right now. That's the problem. They're hoping for the best. And the reality is that's probably not going to be the case because you're just hoping you're, you're, you're relying on someone else to do something instead of doing it yourself. That's a problem. I don't know this, this season. It's not that old. I mean, we're a quarter through the season, but it almost feels like you're already looking towards next year to be like, all right, how can we improve this? What do we do next? I think they have a lot of big decisions coming up. Uh, suck. Yeah. Um, well, I think they have to make some moves. I mean, I don't think they can wait until the trade deadline. That is on March 3rd. So I don't think you can wait until March to be like, you know what? We need to fix this thing. Like, what? I feel like we've known that for a while. Like, I think they need to be looking at. They. Uh, when was Boudreaux? Who got fired on Thanksgiving? Boudreaux. We thought. We thought. Was it? Yeah. We thought Trotz was going to be. He thought he was it's too. Not, yeah, it's not. It's not too late to make a change whether it's you know we know barry trotz is available whether he'd want to come back or not i don't know he was just recently talking with shoot, some local sports anchor you know barry trotz would be great but he's not the only coach that necessarily is available whether you go with one of the assistants not playing foresight whether you go with the dude whose name i'm blanking on in hershey like there are options you go and you try and steal an assistant coach from somewhere else there are options here 
I'm sure that Brian McClellan knows because he's does this full time for a living. And I have a big issue with the fact that another team is in kind of the same boat. Like I think the caps have more bit injuries to big name players in Colorado is, but when you take Landeskog out of the team and you take the out of the team, those are two big names for them. They also have two other guys that are out, but they're not as big. Names. And so I think the reality right now is that this team is not living up to where they should be. And you can't trade everybody. Can they make one or two trades that could turn things around? Yeah, maybe. I mean, you have to worry about then the time, the implementing them into the lineup and how much they have to learn about the system, how much they have to gel with their teammates. The reality is trades may not work. Any move they may make may not work. Or do you look at switching up the coaching staff? I just, I don't know. I, I, I think the quicker move is to switch up the coaching staff, which could be the wrong move, obviously. Or you need to make some trades. I need to make some trades anyways then get a little bit younger and kind of move away from some guys that are getting hurt or guys that can step up with this coaching staff. Because what we've seen right now is if you lose the big-name players, you're terrible. You know, I, I had somebody at work earlier this week go, I think the Caps are going to struggle all year. I think what we're seeing right now is what's going to be like all year. And I'm like, well, I think Laviolette's got one more game left in him on Wednesday, and then I think he's gone. And the guy stopped dead in his tracks in the hallway and was like, really? I did. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we'll see what happens Wednesday night, but I don't think the the, the front office and Ovechkin and everybody else is going to just let this season get away him. from them. You don't think so? You're going to stick I, with them? No. Everything everything we're hearing from, from local beat reporters, from Tarek Elbashir, from Samantha Pell, is that this team – the front office is waiting to see what they've got with when now everybody's back, when the injured players are back. And I'm looking at them going, were you paying attention last year? Because this roster is not dramatically changed with the exception of the goaltending department. So why do you suddenly think that they are going to be better than last year? Yes, because they've got better goalies. Sure, that will be helpful. But here's my concern. We have an older roster, the core group of players. We talked about this, for, I feel like, forever now. Older players get hurt. Or, sorry, older players, when they get hurt, it takes longer for them to come back. We've seen that when they're out, this team sucks. There's nothing to say this isn't going to happen again. What happens if these same injured players or other players go down? Then they're going to suck again, and they're not going to make the playoffs. Something has to change, whether it's the coaching staff or the players, because what they have right now is not working, and there's no guarantees that they're going to have everybody back and they're going to stay healthy. Well, hopefully they stay healthy. I don't know. I don't know. Could this be Laviolette's last stand? You're saying no. I don't. Ugh. I mean, he's I just got, think he, they're waiting. I think the front office is waiting, and I think it's a mistake. He's got such a tenure in the NHL. I feel bad for the guy because he did come in at such a hard time with COVID and everything like that, but – I just I don't feel like he's clicking. I don't feel like this team has bought into his style of play. I don't think they get it. And it's been three years now. Uh, if you don't get it it's now. Not, it, it's not a shot at him, right? If he if well, no, like look at Barry Trotz, right? In Nashville forever, came to D.C., won a cup, right? Took a couple years, but he won a cup. He's going to go – he went to then to the Islanders, and it kind of worked for a little bit there. Then, I, shockingly, they let him go. And coaches get moved around all the time. Look at uh, – what's his psychopath's name? Tortorella, right? Worked really well for him. He did great in Columbus, won a cup in Tampa, uh, didn't work in Vancouver, starting to turn things around with Philadelphia, right? So there's – coaches get moved around. Sometimes a, a coach's style doesn't fit with the players that are on the team. That's just reality. And it looks like this is a, the same thing happening here in D.C., where you have a team that doesn't have the players for this coaching staff. And is the front office looking to get the players for this coaching staff that will work? Or can they find a coach that can coach these players and fit the coaching style or their game style, their plans based on what they have? Because they haven't, the, the, uh, Laviolette and his staff have not gotten the players 
to produce right now. And that's just reality. And it's not just the role players. The, uh, the star players aren't tearing it up either. You see, I remember, I think it was Barry Trotz's first year, maybe his second year, Ovi was late to a practice, and he benched Ovi for a game. Said, all right, you can't be here on time. You're not playing. I think Ovi bought into that so much because he was like, oh, my God, you're not treating me like I'm a superstar. You're treating me like one of the boys. I think Ovi loved that. And I think that's why him and Barry Trotz were able to win a cup. Ovi wasn't MVP, Alexander Ovechkin, the best ever. Ovi was, hey, man, what's going on? You're one of the boys. So I don't know what's going on in that locker room. Plus, you know, this is a different time for Ovechkin. He's a dad now. He's got two kids. Maybe he doesn't want to be one of the boys. Maybe he wants to be one of the dads. Maybe he wants to be one of the, you know, he wants to be one of the leaders where a couple years ago, maybe he didn't feel that way. I don't know, but LaViolette, LaViolette's got his own way of doing things. Maybe it's just not clicking, like you said, with the guys, and they're looking to do different things. I mean, everyone has the same goal, but is it how you get there, the path to get there? I don't know if it's the same path for for Ovechkin and the boys and co- Coach LaViolette. We'll see what happens. I don't know. Uh, other well, good news. Pairings sometimes don't work. Yeah. I think that's just it, you yeah. know? And so I hope you're right. I just everything I feel like we've read and Laviolette may not not Laviolette. Um McClellan may not be like tipping his hand, but you know, he, we very easily could wake up tomorrow morning if the game tonight doesn't go well. Or even if it does go well. We've seen in professional sports before that a coach wins a game and then you still call him next morning like, Yeah, uh, thank you for your time. So I hope you're right. I hope we wake up tomorrow or after the game not even after the game. But if they lose tonight, I just I don't know. I don't I don't see a way forward, and I think they have to prepare. Every general manager and coaching staff should be prepared for injuries. You should always have a plan and then have a, a backup to that plan and a backup to the backup plan. And their backup plan, their first backup plan sucks because this team right now is struggling. They're not a good hockey team right now. No, they're not. And it's sad. Some good news, though, we got to say Backstrom – He is practicing with the team. He actually did some shooting drills this week, which is very good, uh, a very good sign. Still no idea when or if he is coming back, but at least it looks like he's heading in the right direction. It's great. You know, we still don't know if he's going to play again this season. He's still got to be able to take a hit with those hips. I, I still think there's a possibility that he doesn't play again, either this season or ever. Um, and the Caps have the players to – I mean, no one's going to be able to take over for Nicholas Backstrom, but they've got centers. I still want to know who who's – when he comes back, if he comes back, who's losing a spot? Like, which guy are you taking off the center spot? It's not Kuznetsov, even though he won't shoot the puck. It's not Dylan – I don't think it should be Dylan Strom moving out of the center spot. He's got 15 – he's second on the team in points right now. Five goals and 10 assists. Is it Lars Eller? That's who I have. Would you go already with. traded someone? You know, I don't think it's Nick Dowd. So is Eller the odd man out? Where's back from playing? Are you moving Strom back? Like I don't know. It's it's an interesting problem. It's a good problem to have. But lineups were from today's morning skate. You know, you got Strom, Sheary, who's tearing. I can't get behind Connor Sheary, and I think it's only because he used to be a Penguin. Like, dude is tearing it up. He's second on the team in goals right now. He's got seven goals, three assists. I can't do it just because he was a former Penguin. I think I have this prejudice against him, and it's not his fault. Somebody literally just tweeted out a story about him uh, and was talking about what he learned by being in Pittsburgh and knowing that you're not the number one guy. And he kind of learned from that with um, working with Sidney Crosby. So I think that has actually working with Sidney Crosby coming here has actually helped him out because now you have another superstar like Alex Ovechkin. I know I just said he just wants to be one of the boys, but he is one of the superstars here. And you have a guy like Connor Sheary knowing that like you need to perform as he's doing, but you're also uh, assisting the um, the superstar. Samantha Pell said this in her story for the Washington Post about Connor Sheary. She talked to Carl Haglin on Sheary's time in Pittsburgh uh, and playing with Crosby. It is not easy to play with superstars, and if you are not playing well with them, they don't want you on their line. He obviously did something right. 
So he's out there to prove to the superstars that, yeah, I can hang with you. Yeah, I can be there for you. I know what my role is. And he's doing it well. He, he learned from that with Sidney Crosby. He's bringing that skill that he got in Pittsburgh with Crosby to the Capitals and Ovi. I, I, like I said, I have a completely ridiculous prejudice against him merely because he's a former Penguin. And so, like, I don't like you. But he's 30 years old right now. He turns 31 in June, so after this season. And he's tearing up right now. And you know what? Great for him. He's an unrestricted free agent after this season. So if he keeps doing well, he's going to cost a little bit more. But, hey, maybe you found a top six winger here who can play well, can tear it up. I mean, right now he's – where did the stats go? I just had them in front of me. He's fifth on this team in points. He's got uh, 10.7 goals. Uh, three assists. He's second on the team in goals right now. Plan he's, you know, uh, I was looking at the lineups were posted about a half an hour ago for Matt Wayrich of NBC Sports Washington. Ovechkin, Stroman, Shiri on the first line. I, I, I like that. Milano, Kuznetsov, Oshi. I like what Milano's been bringing. Uh, Marcus Johansson, Eller, and Mantha. That's another guy, by the way, that I think could be potentially moved out is Anthony Mantha. Already? Like, and it's just, I just... I don't feel like he takes advantage of the opportunity. He's, he's got 10 points in 20 games. I know it's the same as Shiri. He's got five goals, five assists. I just, I feel like for whatever reason, you know, I don't like necessarily getting rid of him because he's only 28 or he just turned 28 back in September. So he's a young guy, but with $5.7 million a year, you shouldn't be matching a guy that's making 1.5. Like, I just feel like they're not getting the production that is coming with that cap hit. And if they can't, get that or they're not going to get that then maybe you move him out and maybe that's maybe that's someone you throw out there to bring in another player um you know i don't know necessarily who is theoretically available i mean you and i earlier today were talking with dan Holmey from locked on capitals that podcast um a lot of fun chatting with him about the state of the caps spoiler alert it's not great uh, but one of the things we were talking about he brought up was the capitals i guess are rumored to be looking at bo horvat of the Vancouver Canucks and maybe Anthony Mantha is a guy that you're looking at going, Hey, it's not working here. Maybe we do a swap their salary cap difference. I mean, Mantha's at 5.7. Give me a sec. I can look up Horvat. I think he was at six point. Uh, it was like 6.1 or six something. Where are you? Oh no. Horvat's at 5.5. Hey, we'll save some money. There you Actually, go. I like that. If we were to make, so maybe make a like-for-like like trade. He turns 28 in April, so they're only a year apart. It gives you another center. You lose a winger, not great, but you know there's there's things that we can fill in there. You know that maybe that gives you an opportunity to do you move out the man who scored the greatest goal in Caps history and in, in Lars Eller. Oh, that'd be a tough one to move on from. I got to be honest. If Eller ever left this team, it'd be a little difficult. But that's the reality of sports. And you know, I, Horvat. Uh, Dan was talking about how he likes to shoot the puck. Yes, please. Like I'm fine with centers that like to score. Yevgeny Kuznetsov. Like I'm okay with someone who likes to take shots on net. So this is perfectly fine with me. If they were to make a move like that, that kind of like for like, if Vancouver would be interested, it doesn't hurt the cap situation. Um, I probably shouldn't have closed it to see how many more years he has on his contract. I know Mantha has one more. Whereas uh, Horvat would be an unrestricted free agent after the season. So that would give you an opportunity to see if he's your guy or maybe you let him go and look at rebuilding with another free agent or a trade or someone bringing up from the minors, or maybe you just don't need another center. Cause you've got Dylan Strom who also was a great move. He looks like he's working out so far. Knock on wood. He's only 25. It's nice having these guys in their mid twenties that are doing well. He's on the first line. I like what we've seen from Dylan Strom. I think he's, he was a great pickup. I, you know, I'm excited to see Connor Brown come back next season, see what he can do. If Shiri can keep going, I just, I have questions about Anthony Mantha, and I think it's just a reality of his style of play. He's a big guy who doesn't necessarily use his body enough. When he does, he's great. I just don't think he does it enough. Maybe this just isn't the right team for him. Kind of like, what was the dude's name? Brendan Dillon. I still liked him. I like that trade. I like bringing him to this team. I just think he just didn't fit here. Maybe it's the same thing with Anthony Mantha. He just needs a different environment, a different team. Maybe we make that like for like a Mantha for a horror. I don't even know if Vancouver would want to do that. Do they even need wingers? I have no idea. Uh, Phil, let us know. Does your alleged first team in the Vancouver Canucks, do they, uh, do they need a winger? We'll tra- make a straight up. Mantha for horror. It's a difference of 200000 in terms of a cap hit. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, let's see what happens down the road. We got uh, so many plates spinning for this team, really. I mean, I agree with what you said. There are some good guys here. Daniel Strom's really come into his own. Sonny Milano, I really like what I've seen from him. So there's some stuff that is working. As much as we have been complaining over the last half hour or more about what this team is going through, there are some bright spots. Complaining. <laughs> They're, commenting commenting sure I, I i i do a little bit of complaining but that's fair but there's uh there's just there's so much going on with this caps team they've got the goaltending they have a couple names but they just can't seem to put everything together we'll see what happens down the road um lots of work for this team to do we're we're quarter of the way through the season they got a lot of ground to make up if they want to make the playoffs so what else is going on in caps world uh, well, we got some good, we got some really good, and we have some uh, hopefully not so bad. But uh, first, we have to say get well soon to John Walton. He will be missing tonight's Caps game. It looks like he, and he tweeted this out, uh, he has come down with a case of COVID. So he will be missing the game. Get well soon. Congratulations are in order for Garnet Hathaway. He was actually away from the team uh, as his wife gave birth on Tuesday. So congratulations to them. It looks like uh, his wife and the baby are both, I think it was a little girl um and so congratulations to them and then last little bit of news via russian machine never breaks as the caps last first round pick ivan miroshnichenko nice. did i get that right i think that might have been the closest i've ever gotten to saying his last name correct i'll get it one day i really hope he makes this caps team because i want to get a shirt with his name on the back if only because i want to see how it looks because his name is very there's a lot of letters there yeah like he you has have to, you have to use both name. arms yeah, it's going, I mean, it's, I, you know, also because I honestly do think he's going to be, like, not OV 2.0, because I don't think he'd be as good as Ovechkin, but I think he's, like, o OV light. You I'm, know, I'm okay with that. Be, he's, he, he hits, he's a, he's got, looks like he has some speed, he's a big guy, you know, I like what I'm seeing. He has been playing uh, and doing quite well. He was originally playing with the, like, a juniors team, the MHL over in Russia, he's now gotten bumped up to essentially the, the VHL, which is essentially the AHL over in Russia. So now he's playing at their minor league level, which is a nice step for him. Hopefully he tears it up there and is playing in the KHL before the end of the season. I think he's still got a contract over there for another this season and next season, I want to say. So we're not going to see him in the NHL. There still is that gentleman's agreement between the NHL and the KHL in terms of players have contracts. You know, they're not come in and you know you're not gonna kind of come steal the dude or sneak him out of russia in the middle of the night um so i think you know i think this is a guy we're gonna see for the 24 25 season whether it's in hershey or with the capitals i mean let's see what he does uh in a couple years hopefully he can join Connor mcmichael and hendrick's la pierre and you know see what those three guys can do down the road so is that it for what's going on in caps world I think, I mean, yeah, I think it's going to be him and LaPierre and Tom Wilson is your top line in like five years, six years. And Willie's got the C on his chest. You know? Zero doubt in my mind. Or, I think it's him or, oh, the league's not like that. It's either him or Carlson, I think, get the C when Ovechkin uh, hangs him up. I think it's one of those two. Yeah, I think it's Willie. I think you got more years out of uh, Tom Wilson than you do John Carlson. So once Obi leaves, that C goes to Willie. It's just simple math. Like, that's how that works. But, yeah, yeah I mean, I, I could see it going to either dude, to be honest. I think it could go to Carlson and then to Wilson after that. But I think those are your two leads. Yeah. You know, once Ovechkin retires, then yeah. I think it goes to one of those two guys. That is it for what's going on in Caps World. Now let's go down on the farm. All right, everybody, here we go. We're going down on the farm. We are talking Hershey Bears and South Carolina Stingrays. Coach Dan, what's going on down on the farm? Start in Hershey, where the Bears went one and two with a win over Hartford. Bears are currently fourth in the Atlantic Division with 20 points for back of first place Providence. It's so early in the season, though. I feel like the standings are just going to keep jumping around for a bit. They'll be back at it tonight, that being Wednesday in Springfield, and they stay on the road with back-to-back -back games starting on Friday in Hartford. Down in South Carolina, the Stingrays went 2-1. They are already doing better than last season. 
Oh, that was a tough one last year. Uh, both of their wins over the last week were over Orlando. Now, they're currently tied for first in the South Division with 17 points. They'll attempt to take first for their own with two games before we talk again. Those being back-to-back games starting on Friday in Atlanta. That's what's going on down on the farm. All right, well, go Bears, go Stingrays. Now let's go around the NHL and beyond. All right, everybody, here we go. We are going around the NHL and beyond. Lots of stuff happening. Thanksgiving week. Is there a lot of stuff happening, or is everybody just ready to eat some turkey? Coach Dan, what's going on around the NHL and beyond? Well, in one of the more shocking bits of news over the past few years, the NHL announced nothing. Nobody got suspended or fined over the past week. Well done, boys. You all (laughs) behaved yourselves. (laughs) I actually stole one piece of news that was in here, so that went up. There really hasn't been a lot of news over the past week, so we can kind of wrap up with the and beyond section as the USA women's hockey team won its third straight game against Hockey Canada, suck it, Canada, to go up three to nothing in the rivalry series. I'm taking this rivalry series aspect apparently pretty seriously right now. (laughs) Sunday's game in Seattle was played in front of a record-setting crowd of 14,551. The largest crowd to ever witness a U.S. women's hockey game on U.S. soil. So that's pretty awesome. The rivalry series against Canada continues on December 15th in Henderson, Nevada, because nothing says hockey like the desert. That's news from the past week in the NHL and beyond. So if this rivalry series is a five game series and the U.S. has won three, did we already win the series? It's over, baby. Yeah, it's over. The other two games, they're just they're just fun games. We already won. Hoist, hoist the cup or trophy or whatever they get. <laughs> All right, so it is Thanksgiving week here in the U.S. Coach Dan, I'm going to ask you something. I listened to the Benched with Bonetta podcast. It's an NFL podcast, and uh, it's with Rachel Bonetta, who is actually Canadian, but um, very good at her podcast and being on air. Uh, she has a start, cut, bench thanksgiving foods what thanksgiving Ooh. food are you starting which one are you benching and which one are you cutting completely wait are you giving me like options or do i just have to pick no no your your thanksgiving dinner like which ones oh, okay. all right so let, let's start it off who are you starting who is a must at thanksgiving dinner there's no way around it you have to have it otherwise it's not thanksgiving oh, pumpkin pie you're going with dessert. You're starting everything off with dessert. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I am. I'll eat pumpkin pie only for Thanksgiving if I could. That, oh, so good. Um, okay, if, I, if I'm ignoring dessert. No, no, you, know, you can stick with pie. I'm cool with that. That's, uh, that makes sense to me. <laughs> so you're going pumpkin pie. I think, you know what? I'm going pumpkin pie to start. I'm, 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 go- I'm going fatty over here. <laughs> I think for, um, for mine, this is going to sound a little crazy to people out there dinner rolls you gotta have you gotta have that little like yeast roll to make it like a mini sandwich of everything on your thanksgiving plate you gotta have the dinner rolls that's my starter oh i've never done that that's an interesting idea i'm a sandwich guy i love them i will make sandwiches out of anything so i love sandwiches i never thought of that though that's a that's a pro move buddy thank you thank you all right let's go over to (laughs) benched like if you had to skip a year what part of the meal would you bench uh, the, ooh. so i can't have it this year is what you're saying right well what would i what would i be okay missing this year um hmm, i don't know so my it's tough because so typically a lot of like the uh extra bits like not the turkey but the extra bits my mother-in-law makes and they're it's, they're all really good um i mean i know what i'm gonna say for for uh, you know firing or cutting or whatever um, 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 maybe the, the, um, oh my God, I'm blanking what it's called. Sweet potatoes. I really like them. I wouldn't want to miss out on them, but if I like lost them just for a year, I think I'd be okay with it. All right. So what do you do? Sweet potatoes. Are you a family that puts marshmallows on top? Do you do brown sugar? 
Does, I've had some in the past where it's got like a little bit of like orange citrusy flavor to the sweet potatoes. Like, what's your style? Ooh, never had that. That sounds good. I personally would prefer the marshmallows. I think well, I think we lately um, like walnuts or something on top. Mm-hmm. No, it's good. It's it's I that might be wrong. It's good. Whatever it is, it's good. But if I had to pick like one thing that I had to that I was okay with missing out for ju- and I very much like sweet potatoes that I was missing out on just this year. I think I'd be okay with that. All right. I I'd think miss it, but I'd be okay. I would have to bench. I'm going to go mashed potatoes because okay, get, get out. Sweet potatoes are home. The sweet potatoes are also on the menu. So that's two starches right there. So if I can, if I can get one, I'm going to keep sweet potatoes for Thanksgiving instead of the mashed potatoes. Oh man. You got to make that little crater, and then you put gravy in the crater, and then you mash it. Oh, it's so good. Delicious. That actually, that was my second choice for, what was it, starting? Starting, yeah. Yeah, that was my second choice. All right, so what about cut? Cutting, leaving the team, not a part of the Thanksgiving dinner anymore. Oh, stuffing. Get the out of here. Really? That's it. Yeah, no, not a fan of stuffing. Interesting. You see, we just started doing in 2020, we do like the stovetop stuffing, but also we do Maryland style stuffing with oysters. So it's oysters, Old Bay. It's kind of like homemade stuffing that I really enjoy. So I don't know if I could cut that because I re- like that's something new. So oyster stuffing is something like I, w- I want to keep on the table. I'm trying to think of who I would want to cut because I love everything. I mean, stuffing, cranberry sauce, turkey. I want to keep all that on the plate. I think I'm going to cut cut green bean casserole. This is Thanksgiving. I don't need anything healthy-ish. Don't need any vegetable. So just cut the, the green bean casserole off the plate. Fair enough. I like green beans, so I'll, I'll, I would keep them on there. But, uh, yeah. No, I got you. I got you. I mean, I, I'm sure tomorrow I'm just going to be itching for dessert. And then I'm just going to eat. <laughs> way too much at this I, oh i just remember every thanksgiving at the end of the night i'm like oh no <laughs> now something that has become a staple in in baltimore at least like you're not a you're not german so this probably isn't on your plate but something that's been missing my from my wife's family has german okay do they have sauerkraut interesting enough because her her mother my mother-in-law her mom is from uh, uh was from germany uh no Really? Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, that's, I never really thought of that. That's interesting. That that's always been on my plate for the uh, for the, well, not my pr- plate personally because I think it's disgusting. But it's always been available on the table at Thanksgiving, except for the last couple of years. But sauerkraut, apparently, I thought it was like just because of my family being German. But apparently, it's a really big Baltimore thing. I guess just with you know German immigrants coming to to Baltimore. But that's been a staple for a lot of uh, a lot of people here in Baltimore. So, all right. That was our Thanksgiving start. We'll have to do this again at uh, Christmas. Start, bench, uh, cut. So, hope you guys enjoyed what, that. What were the what are the what are the things that we have to choose from at Christmas? Yeah, I, I'm like I, I don't know. Like I think it's all the same trees, meal. Lights. <laughs> yeah, basically, right? I don't know. I, I I couldn't change. I love Christmas, so I wouldn't I wouldn't be able to cut or bench anything. <laughs> Just start it all. That's what I would do. Start it all. All right, so Coach Dan, is that the show for this week? That's it, buddy. All right, guys. Well, if you want to continue the conversation with Coach Dan or I, you can. It's real easy. All you have to do is tweet to either one of us while it's still around. You can tweet to me at Brando Cash. Coach Dan, where can people tweet to you at for now? (laughs) Stole my joke. You can find it's not even my joke. Everybody's joke right now. You can find me on Twitter at WTP Coach Dan talking all kinds of capitals related things, as well as talking about the World Cup. As we saw Japan beat Germany earlier today, we have uh, Saudi Arabia beat Austra- uh, Australia, beat Argentina. Australia was beating France until France decided to show up, and then the U.S. pulled the capitals and choked. So that's what's going on there. Talking about Arsenal Football Club once that comes back top of the table. Talk about the Bills, the Commanders. It's looking, Brandon. It's happening, buddy. It's finally happening. What's it's happening? Like Snyder selling the team. Oh, about time. What are we going to yes. call it this time? I well, 
anything is better than commanders. <laughs> but, well, that's not true. I'm sure there are worse ones that are available. But uh, I am 100% on board with a new owner. The only problem is it could be Jeff Bezos, and he is an awful person as well. But he's not as bad as Dan Sutter. So, anyways, that's finding me on Twitter at WTP Coach Dan. But hey, if you've enjoyed the show, go ahead and check us out on Facebook, facebook.com slash what the puck pod. It's where we post when new shows are coming out, as well as all sorts of interesting things related to the Washington Capitals, Hershey Bears, South Carolina Stingrays, the National Hockey League, American Hockey League, the ECHL, which doesn't have a longer name, I guess, which doesn't make any sense, and other fun things regarding hockey that pop into Brandon's head. But I was talking about the Bills and the Commanders a moment ago. Brandon, if someone happens to be a fan of a certain purple-clad team based out of Baltimore, is there a podcast they should listen to? That's right. You can go over and check us out. We are the Call Podcast. Me and my buddy Josh, we cover the Baltimore Ravens. We will get you ready for the Ravens versus the Jacksonville Jaguars in Jacksonville this Sunday coming up. You can check us out wherever you listen to this podcast. Now, if you did enjoy this show, don't forget that we are on the Locked On Capitals podcast as well. Uh, Coach Dan and I were talking on that episode. You get to hear us over there on Friday. So make sure you go over and subscribe to the Locked On Capitals podcast as well as What the Puck. You can also watch their show as well on YouTube and Facebook. So definitely go check that out. Now we do this show for free. You listen, stream, and download for free on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn, Player.fm, Oh. Overcast, Google Podcasts, uh, Facebook, YouTube, Spotify, all those places. Make sure you check us out there. Leave us an Apple Podcast review. Rate us over on Spotify. Then be social with the show and let people know on Facebook and Twitter and Tumblr and Pinterest and Instagram and Reddit and Snapchat and Twitch and TikTok. Anywhere you're social on the web or with your phone, say, I'm a Washington Capitals fan. I listen to What the Puck and you should too. So let's go over the games until we talk again. November 25th, the Capitals are up against the Calgary Flames. That game is at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. You can watch that on NBC Sports Washington. Hey, Coach, do you think with the NFL announcing that there's going to be Black Friday games starting next year, is that going to affect the NHL schedule at all? Do you think they're still going to have games midday on Black Friday? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think they'll do it. I mean, they'll have to be a little bit more aware of sort of the timing for some of the games, but I think I think they'll still have games. Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of intrigued. They they tried really hard to make Black Friday a hockey holiday, but I guess it just didn't catch on. And then the the massive uh, freight train that is the NFL came in and said, "We'll do it. We'll take it over." Watch us on Amazon Prime, and then on Small Business Saturday. November 26th, the Capitals are in New Jersey up against the New Jersey Devils. That game is at 7 o'clock, and that's on NBC Sports Washington. Then the Caps start the Western Canadian road trip, and that game is November 29th. They started in Vancouver, beautiful city. I want to go back. That game is at 10 o'clock Eastern time here on the uh, east coast of the U.S., and you can watch that locally on NBC Sports Washington. So that is pretty much it for the show this week. Everybody, have a great Thursday. Happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy yourselves, everybody out there. Everybody, say it loud. Say it proud. Let's go, Caps. This has been a production of Brando Cash Entertainment. Music by DJ Wolfman. Voiceover by Sarah Jacks. For more information, go to brandocash.com.